The next thing I'm going to do is go look at where they can have drop bags. Again, you're going to find this on the uh, the race website. Oh, here we go. Pacer, crew, drop bags. 100 and I'm going 135 mile runners may have a pacer after 50 miles or when it starts to get dark. I don't use pacers. I am a no pacer kind of runner. Here we go. Please label drop bags with name, race number, distance, and desired location. So I'm going to have to put multiple distances on mine. There will be tarps at the start finish for drop bags. Bags will be taken to Shorty's Brothel at 5.30 a.m. on race day. It is each runner's responsibility to pick up their drop bags. Any drop bags remaining will be disposed of or donated. Okay, so this tells me what I needed to know, that we can have drop bags both at the start finish and at Shorty's Brothel. In my younger days, not so very long ago, I, uh... I did less drop bags than I do now. I am now of the mentality, and I suggest you be too for those first couple of hundreds, to have a drop bag wherever the hell they'll let me have a drop bag. And if I don't use it, great. So I'm going to... I'm going to have drop bags at both Shorty's Brothel and uh, the start finish. Okay? So what I like to do... I'm going to know... This race is a little bit different, obviously, than a point-to-point -point would be in this case. And uh, I will probably do my Run Love It plan with you later as well, so that you can see how that's going to look a little bit different. Um, that's like a little bit more of a weird spider course with out and, a couple of out and backs, but mostly not repeating aid stations. There are a couple, but not many, not as many as this, obviously, where you're doing loops over and over and over. So usually what I do is I'll pick a color like blue. Okay, so this is everywhere I can have a drop bag, and it's everywhere there's going to be a drop bag. This race is obviously different because I'm going to have two kind of like big duffel bags as my drop bags. The planning would be a little bit different for a point to point, which I'll show you probably my, my run love it plan. But this is everywhere that I have a drop bag on course. I keep drop bags now everywhere that I could have a drop bag, especially with spare socks because of the feet issues I used to have. So even if I don't stop, those are there for me in case of an emergency. But I don't want to stop seven miles into the race for my drop bag. I don't even necessarily want to stop 13 miles into the race for my drop bag. So let's say that my drop bag is going to be 20 miles. I personally that's kind of about the sweet spot for me is like eh, every 20 miles is every 30 miles is too far I have found for a drop bag uh, I have done that before and I don't like it okay so there here's another 20 miles so I think that probably the ideal time for me now that I'm looking at this plan and knowing that I like to hit it every 20 miles well hey the loop is 20 miles so I think every time I complete one of those loops is going to be a definite drop bag step. So I am changing the color for places that I know I definitely want to stop and get hit my drop bag. So these other ones, I should probably make the color a little bit stand out uh, even more. So I could do that like yellow. I don't know. There. Maybe a little more contrast to help me out here. Okay. So these other ones, I know if I have like a sock emergency or a fuel emergency that I have a drop bag there and I could stop and access it if I need to. But the green ones are the time where I know based on my race plan and the way I'm planning my race that that is when I have to stop. Um, it means that for some reason, it, it's likely going to be fuel related is going to be the big one. That's time for me to go hit my drop bag up grab some things. Now the nice thing about a loop course, so with a, let's pretend for a second, let's pre pretend for a second this isn't a loop course and this is just a random aid station right here, okay? And it's yellow, so I'm not supposed to stop at that drop bag, but I know I have emergency socks there, okay? So let's say I stop and get my emergency socks in, on a point-to-point -point course. I'm not going to really have nutrition there because I didn't plan to stop there. Or maybe I'll have, like, an emergency thing, but that's it. So in that case, I'm still going to have to stop at my my planned stop on a point-to-point -point course. 
But this, because it's a loop course, is a little bit different. Let's say I do my emergency stop here at 53 miles. Well, it's the same aid station. It's the same drop bag. Is it 60 miles? So if I do do an emergency stop on one of these yellows, I'll probably just grab all my stuff from the green, but I don't know if that just makes this more confusing for you. I don't want to confuse you. That's the last thing I want to do. All right, here I'm going to plan to not stop. So basically, Shorty's brothel, the bag, is going to just be an emergency-only bag. As you can see, I have no actual planned stops there. All right, this here, yeah, let's... Let's do this. I think I'm going to want to stop quite a bit more. All right, so for this last 35 miles, <laughs> why did I do this? Um, I have never finished 100 not feeling totally spent, so the idea of doing a 50K after 100 is a little bit overwhelming right now. Um, it's certainly something. But anyway, I anticipate that I'm going to be going, uh, I'm going to be hurting here. So you know what? I'm probably going to stop quite a bit, quite a bit. I guess I'll just, you know what I'll do? I'll just plan a mandatory stop right there and right there to get me through the last seven. I think... Even though I'll only have seven miles left when I get to this one right here, I think it'll give me a, a boost to stop at my drop bag, maybe get a little caffeine treat or something there. So there you have it. Those are my, my plan stops. Um, usually for a 100 miler, as you can see, it, and this is no different the way I planned this, I usually have about four drop bag stops that I actually plan to do for a regular 100 miler and this this reflects that by the time I get to 100 miles I will have stopped uh, four times so now this chart right here again I'm gonna put that on my water bottle I'm gonna be referencing it but this is also gonna be very useful for drop planning and we're gonna get into that in a, uh, a second video and the way this is gonna be useful for drop bag planning and for me there's kind of a huge differential here between times but when you're doing this, you're going to have a much smaller uh, window of time for your 100 miler. Since I'm doing the, the 135, you're going to be able to use these times to kind of figure out when is the earliest you'll be getting to an aid station and when is the latest you'll be getting to an aid station. And that's going to become really important on a course that's not a loop course, especially in giving you an idea of when do I want to have my headlamp on me? Now, for me personally, I have my headlamp on me at all times. I just don't trust that I'm going to make the right decision about when to grab that headlamp. Um, so that's a personal decision kind of thing. But when do I want that headlamp? When do I want that extra layer? Is the temperature going to drop 20 degrees overnight? I'll tell you what, it always feels much colder when the sun goes down. So that's going to give you an idea of which drop bag to put that, that layer in. Uh, when do I want to brush my teeth? I've said that before. Brushing your teeth, oh my God, it's something you wouldn't expect, but it has completely uh, changed my races before because having that crud and that sugar on your teeth when all you want is to not taste sugar, it just makes you more nauseous. So it's going to help me decide where do I want to put a toothbrush? Which drop bag, which drop bag am I going to be hitting at like three in the morning? So using this chart's going to give us a big idea there. Now, the last thing that we have not discussed here is uh, what about elevation, right? How does elevation play into this chart? Well, that's just complicating things further than we're going to go and further than I like to have my pace charts. Yes, if this first 20 miles is all going uphill, then yeah, maybe my times are going to be slower than this and I'm going to make up for it later. So it doesn't necessarily mean anything in that regard. What I'm looking for when I use these, I don't factor in the elevation. I just look at the overall trend between aid stations, okay? And same thing if this is all downhill. Is it okay? You know, if this first 20 miles is all downhill, is it okay if I come in ahead of these times? If I know that, you know, then it's going to be uphill after that? Yes, yes, it's okay. I'm just looking for the, the overall trend, but it's just going to get too complicated for me to uh, 
factor elevation for the whole race throughout here. There is one race that I did it, and that was Scout Mountain. But again, that's more planning. It's more advanced than, um, than what I want to show you guys here today. We're just trying to get you to the finish line, and chances are you're, for your first 100, not doing a race with uh, serious climbs and descents. It's probably a little bit more uh, mild in that sense. So don't worry about elevation factoring into your pace chart. Just worry about keeping an eye on that overall trend. I hope this video helped.